आफ्टरनून एवरी वन आई होप यू आर डूइंग ओके रिमेंबर इवन दो इन दिस लॉकडाउन वी आर ट्रैप इन साइड आवर होम्स बट वी मस्ट ऑल्सो रिमेंबर दैट लर्निंग इज ए कंटिन्यूस प्रोसेस एंड यू मस्ट नेवर स्टॉप लर्निंग लर्न समथिंग न्यू एवरी डे एंड बिलीव मी वन डे यू विल डेफिनेटली अचीव योर गोल्स वट एवर यू हैव सेट इन योर लाइफ टूडे the subject that we will be dealing with is professional ethics and accountability of lawyers in the first class we will be discussing about background of legal profession background of legal profession in india how the legal profession has developed in india we will try to backtrack it and we will try to understand how it has evolved pre, uh, from the ancient era to medieval era to modern era how it has evolved developed that we will be discussing in this class so legal profession is such a profession which is interlinked in various ways and multifarious activities of the society so when we talk about legal profession we have to uh, emphasize upon what is professional ethics professional ethics basically means the rules regulation procedures behavior which is expected from anyone like doctors are expected to tell the patients fairly about whatever the diseases he might have in the same way there are certain expectations from the lawyers as well that when they enter in the court premises they will should wear some gown when they enter in the court uh, court room they should bow down in respect and call upon the judges as my lord your honor to res- to show respect towards the judges and similarly uh, there are various code of conducts rules regarding the legal profession also which when you will be practicing as a lawyer you must adhere to all those practices that forms a part of professional ethics so these all things will be discussed in detail in this particular subject so today's discussion would be more upon what is the background of legal profession now background if we say we can divide the entire history into of legal profession in three parts that is legal profession during british period second part is legal profession legal profession before british period legal profession during british period and legal profession after the british era when the britishers have left the country and the india has become an independent nation how the legal profession has taken shape after that so when we talk about legal profession before the british period we have to talk about the ancient history of the nation now the institution of legal profession in india dates back to the ancient period of history it is apparent from the writings of narada katyana manu we have manu smriti we have several texts religious texts which talks about law dharma theory and various uh, rules and regulation which must be followed 
by the king by the ruler when he is when he is acting as a judge and delivering a judgment there are also certain rule of conduct uh, which have to be followed by the uh, councils or uh, by the wakils who were appearing before the uh, court of the kings or the emperors the king's court was the supermost court of all the courts in, at that time the king had legal advisers to assist him in discharge of judicial functions those days it was not a custom against lawyers to charge remuneration for their service or legal advice when the um, uh, in the ancient era it was basically the dharma shastras were followed and the king on the basis of the advice given by his councils delivered the judgment during the mughal period of indian history it also witnessed to the fact that the institution of lawyers was not recognized so institution or the profession of litigation was also not recognized at that time as well although there is no mention of the body of persons called wakils so there were a body of persons during the mughal era they were called wakils who used to uh, represent their clients or represent the people on their behalf before the court of the king they were called as wakils who represent their clients in the court of qazis muftis maulvis the muslim law basically was the basis of the decision so sharia law or the muslim law hadith sharia on the proper, on the principles of uh, laid down in quran on that basis they used to deliver uh, the emperors of that time used to deliver judgment and the councils were called as wakils now comes the legal profession during the british era or the british period this is a very important period because lot of development happened in during this period the legal profession under mayor's court and supreme court of judicature the present position of legal profession in india is the framework of britishers when the britishers came to india as traders with the east india company the east india company was least interested in the organization of legal profession because when the east india company came to india their main objective was trade and commerce and for earning profit more and more profit and wealth they never cared or bothered about the development of legal profession in the beginning although it was occupied a large part of the country and become as rulers so by the period of time they have occupied large part of the country become as rulers but they were least bothered about the development of the legal profession then in the charter of 1726 something very very important happened a mayor's court was established so by the charter of 1726 a mayor's court was established in india with a mayor and nine older men to administer justice to the people this was the first development in the legal profession in india the basis of the decision was justice and equity the mayor's court delivered its power and authority from the british crown as the charter of 20, 1726 was issued by the british king or the queen so on the basis of the charter the mayor court was established and mayor court used to administer justice in our country at that time then came the charter of 1753 then one more important charter uh, uh, then one more act came that is called the regulating act of 1773 it was a landmark in the direction of legal profession in india under these two acts of 1773 and 1774 provisions was made for the establishment of supreme court of judicature at fort williams in calcutta so the regulating act of 1773 and 1774 for the first time in india established supreme court at calcutta in the fort williams judicature of fort williams it was a supreme court was established at calcutta for the first time in india the object of this charter was not only to establish supreme court in calcutta but also to reform the law and procedures in crown court as well as the company's courts 
so these two one charter and the regulation act was one of the most landmark development that happened during the uh, 18th century in, in india uh, the supreme court which was established at calcutta has to decide cases according to the justice and equity and good conscience so on the basis of the common law principle the supreme court established at calcutta used to decide cases and advocates who meant english and irish british men and advocates of scotland were only allowed to practice so indian practitioners yeah indian legal professionals were not allowed to uh, uh, were not allowed as advocates in the supreme court only englishmen irishmen scottish men were allowed as attorneys or advocates attorneys basically at that time means british attorney attorney or solicitor so indians were not allowed at that time <coughs> then then there came one important development that is legal practitioners act of 1879 legal practitioners act of 1879 is also very landmark act passed which made a drastic change in the legal profession according to section 4 of that an advocate or wakil on role of any high court or pleader of the chief court of punjab was empowered to practice in all courts subordinate to the court on the role he which he in which he was entered so for the first time indian not only indians were allowed to plead in the british or company courts but they can also on the basis of their enrollment could practice all over the country so this was a huge development that have happened because of legal practitioners act of 1879 another a one important committee was established that is called an indian bar committee of 1923 it was constituted to consider the issue of uh, the uh, organizing the issue of organizing a bar council on all india basis and establishment of all india bar council so basically the object of this committee was to establish and bar council for all of india because at that time they were bar council but only in respective states there was no a uh, central authority administering body who could administer the legal profession all over the country so it was a proposal to establish bar council of india all india bar council all in all india basis then after one important act came that is indian bar councils act 1926 this was also a very important act this act was established in response to a demand by the legal profession for unification on autonomy of the bar it eliminated two grades of legal practitioners wakils and pleaders so what it did was that it merged both the classes of wakils and pleaders and they now are called as advocates all over the country so it was also a very major uh, development in the field of law then then the last point comes that is legal profession after the british era after the india become independence we have our constitution how the legal profession was developed So all India bar committee was established in 1951 under the chairmanship of <coughs> Justice S R Das it made its recommendation in 1953 taking account the recommendation of law commission that was established earlier the main feature or objective uh, as laid down uh, by the committee were establishment of an all india bar council integration of all the bar council of all over the country into a single class of legal practitioner known as advocates because at that time there were variety of legal professionals there were wakils there were solicitors there were barristers it was suggested that all of them should be merged under the heading of advocates there was a prescription for a unified qualification for admission of person as advocate because different states have different criteria for admission of a person as an advocate or a pleader 
division of advocates into senior and other advocates so it also uh, recommended that there should be only two classes of advocate that is advocates and senior advocates and creation and they also recommended for the creation of all india bar council for whole of india who could administer the legal profession all over the country because at that time they were bar council but in at a national level there was no any administrative body so there was a need for establishing an administrative body or governing body on an all india basis so there was a recommendation for the establishment of all india bar council then the last point is the advocates act in 1961 advocates act came and it made a huge impact in the legal profession it drastically changed the entire legal profession in india and it also followed almost all of the recommendations of all india bar committee so according to the advocates now there is only one class of pleaders that and that is advocates and among them there are only two class of advocates senior advocates and advocates but and it also provide for establishment of all india bar council which will have a administrative supervisory power over all the bar councils of different states so all the states which are which are having bar councils the supervisory body is the bar council of india so advocates act also recognizes also establish a bar council for india and it also provides unified eligibility criteria to become an advocate earlier different states have different criteria now all of them have been unified and it has been prescribed that every one must be a law graduate or must have done llb or now uh, blb is there at that time llb was required criteria for practicing as an advocate so now it provides that anyone who has done an llb or, or is a law graduate can practice as an advocate all over the country so these were the changes or these were the developments that have happened in the legal profession that is you must study the development of the background of legal profession in these three broad headings only that is legal profession before british era legal profession during british era and legal profession after british era and i hope that from today's class you must have understand the background of the legal profession in the next class we will be dealing about the definition and the interpretation clause of the advocates act because the most important act that you have to study in professional ethics is the advocates act and contempt of court act so that we will be discussing in the next class thank you so much for patient listening thank you